course on uh, rheology, uh, we have seen uh, several uh, aspects of uh, rheological measurements and uh, the analysis of rheological response using material functions. And uh, in the process, we also looked at several models. And uh, from time to time, uh, we have reminded ourselves that uh, the two most predominant uh, modes of rheological observations are related to uh, steady uh, state uh, characterization, which includes steady shear or steady extension. And the other most common one uh, is related to oscillatory shear, stress relaxation creep, but all of them at uh, small uh, deformations or in the linear viscoelastic range. And uh, we know that uh, for uh, engineering applications, uh, deformations can be arbitrarily large. And uh, therefore, the uh, how does the material microstructure respond to large deformations is something that has to be understood for us to say that we understand the rheological response of these materials. So, therefore, uh, in uh, these uh, segments of lectures, uh, we will uh, review uh, and try to understand uh, how do we uh, discuss the nonlinear response, uh, nonlinear rheological response of uh, materials. And uh, what are the tools that are needed uh, for us to describe uh, the nonlinear response uh, as has been discussed several times before. So, what we will do is uh, start with uh, uh, definitions of strain. Uh, we have seen earlier that uh, we define strain through infinitesimal strain tensor, uh, which is only valid for small deformations. Uh, but for large deformations, we had gone through and looked at qualitatively uh, what uh, strain uh, tensor should be for uh, large deformations. We will uh, define it uh, in this uh, segment of lecture. And then uh, we will also look at uh, the convected rates. Uh, we have emphasized this uh, time and again that uh, uh, for uh, the rates to be frame invariant and for rates to be proper. Uh, instead of using partial or uh, substantial derivatives, we need uh, frame invariant rates and especially for quantities such as stress and strain, uh, these frame, frame invariant rates are uh, very useful in determining physically meaningful uh, rates. So, uh, as an example of that, we will look at uh, the upper convected and lower convected derivatives, uh, which are quite commonly used in describing the nonlinear response of uh, materials. Uh, then we will uh, quickly review the nonlinear models uh, which are uh, commonly used. Uh, this discussion uh, will be preliminary and uh, for advanced learners, of course, more uh, discussion has to be followed in terms of many of these nonlinear models, uh, their origin and how and under what uh, situations are they very useful. And uh, finally, as an example of a nonlinear model, we will uh, review the uh, governing equations as well as uh, response of the Gisekas model. So, now going on, uh, we had uh, defined uh, strain uh, earlier qualitatively. So, we will quickly summarize saying that uh, similar to stress and strain rate tensor, uh, strain is also a tensor. And uh, of course, we are familiar uh, from school times that uh, change in length versus initial length is what strain is. And, uh, so, from a point of view of our course, uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, things that we have to remember is uh, we have been saying that at time t is equal to tau and at time t, uh, there are uh, material uh, different configurations and at this time, we had indicated uh, position of a material particle using x tau, while at present time here uh, using x. And uh, what we are interested in knowing, if I take any two material points and sort of a material fiber which joins them, what we are interested in knowing is what happens to this material fiber after some time. And so, therefore, uh, what we are interested in knowing is what happens to dx tau and dx and uh, importantly, uh, what happens to its length. So, because to again conform to what we intuitively say is strain material. And of course, given that uh, the deformation field itself is three dimensional, uh, we have basically a strain tensor which has nine components. And uh, of course, we have worked with infinitesimal strain tensor uh, in discussion of linear viscoelasticity. And so, depending on the reference or basis uh, in uh, this segment, we will define these other strain tensors. Uh, 
and uh, these strain tensors will have the quality that uh, they will reduce to infinitesimal strain tensor whenever deformation is small and which is again an expected uh, thing that these uh, strain measures are valid for arbitrarily large deformations, but whenever deformation is small or for linear viscoelastic response they will reduce to the infinitesimal strain tensor. Uh, we will also see that uh, if there is no deformation, for example, if there is only rigid body translation or there is rigid body rotation, then these strain measures will also reduce to uh, uh, expected quantities. Uh, for example, we will see that E and E tau will reduce to 0, while uh, finger strain tensors such as B will reduce to unity. And so, now uh, these uh, uh, unit tensor or 0 tensor they will reduce to and uh, the time derivatives of these strain measures are what are useful uh, in terms of uh, applications in nonlinear description of uh, rheological response. And uh, for these time derivatives we will use convected rates and uh, again for advanced learners uh, we can show that how the convected rates of strain are related to in fact strain rate tensor and velocity gradient tensor. So, let us now define uh, the strain tensor itself. So, as we have said uh, there is material fiber at uh, time tau and uh, this uh, material fiber uh, has to be related. So, at time tau we have a material fiber which is at time tau and uh, this material fiber has to be related to at present time uh, which is T. And in fact, it is the relationship between the two which defines and uh, this is something called deformation gradient which we have defined earlier. And uh, remember that we have also talked about that if you want to measure strain, it is uh, not only uh, important to look at quantity like this, which is just saying that how is this material fiber changing with respect to the present uh, material fiber, we actually need to know uh, a quantity which is of this kind. So, where the length uh, of the material fiber is uh, important and so these are the type of quantities which are involved in defining strain. So, therefore, the uh, strain tensor is uh, defined uh, as the uh, from the deformation gradient as F t transpose dot F t. So, from deformation gradient we can define the strain tensor and we subtract the unit tensor so that this strain tensor reduces to 0 whenever we have rigid body translation and rigid body rotation. So, for rigid body translations and rotations this tensor will reduce to unity so that the overall E tau will reduce to 0. Similarly, we commonly define finger strain tensor uh, which is given as this. In this case the basis is used as any time uh, tau and the present time uh, with respect to any time tau is what is used for defining the deformation gradient. And again uh, this strain tensor E will reduce to 0 whenever we have rigid body translation and rotation. And of course, B will reduce to unity whenever we have rigid body translation and rotation. So, uh, just to uh, rewrite the strain tensor, we could write them in terms of displacement gradient uh, which we have defined earlier. So, uh, this is a matter of algebra to try to write these uh, quantities uh, which is the deformation gradient in terms of displacement gradient and then we can show that uh, the strain tensors are related to deformation uh, displacement gradients. And uh, we can see here that uh, there are uh, terms here which are of the order of displacement gradient itself and then there are uh, terms which are of the order displacement gradient squared. So, this is very similar to a function where uh, if uh, f of x is there, then uh, what we have is some terms are of the order x and some other terms are of the order x squared. And if x is very small, then uh, we can ignore uh, the x squared term. So, for uh, small values of x, x squared will be much less than x and therefore can be ignored. So, we can see here that if uh, displacement gradient is very small, in other words if deformation itself is very small, then the strain tensors will reduce to this. And it should not be a surprise to us that in fact, uh, half times h plus h transpose is nothing but 
the infinitesimal strain tensor. So, in fact, you, we can work with uh, some of these details and then uh, just uh, get familiar with what happens to these strain tensors for a couple of examples. And uh, to take the most common example that we have uh, used in this course, which is simple shear flow, where there is one dimensional flow with shear in y direction, so that uh, we have only one component of velocity gradient, uh, non-zero. And of course, the overall strain is basically an integral from any time to uh, present time, gamma dot y x d t tau prime. And therefore, we can write uh, the any time uh, 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 configuration of a material point in terms of configuration at the present time. So, based on these and definitions of uh, the deformation gradients, we can see that uh, the deformation gradient is uh, for, sim uh, for simple shear has only one non-diagonal non-zero element, while all the diagonal elements are one. If the strain is zero, for example, is if V x itself is zero, then uh, del V x by del y will also be zero and gamma dot Y x will be zero. In that case, both F tau and F will reduce to unity. So, for uh, uh, rigid body uh, motion, in which case gamma dot Y x is zero, we also have gamma Y x zero and in that case F tau and F will be unity. Otherwise, of course, gamma Y x and uh, minus gamma Y x uh, inform us as to how much is the amount of shear that is being imposed on the material. So, when we look at uh, the strain tensor uh, in simple shear flow, again by working with algebra based on the definitions, we can see that it is basically multiplication of the transpose of the deformation gradient along with itself and then subtraction of the unit tensor and we get uh, for a simple shear flow, the overall uh, strain tensor is given by half gamma y x gamma y x squared. So, this is the square term which is the unusual term compared to whatever we have been used to. In uh, class uh, from earlier times, uh, including our initial classes in strength of materials, uh, given that we are looking at small deformations, uh, the strain infinitesimal strain tensor is what we are familiar with. So, we can see that if uh, gamma y x is very small, then in that case the second order term can be neglected and uh, we get the infinitesimal strain tensor. So, whenever gamma y x is very small, the square uh, term can be very uh, can be neglected with respect to the uh, gamma y x and therefore, it reduces to infinitesimal strain tensor. And again, this is intuitively what we are more comfortable with that given the only non-diagonal term, uh, one non-diagonal term is non-zero. So, therefore, this is an example of simple shear deformation. But when simple shear deformation happens over arbitrarily large uh, quantity, then we have this gamma y x squared also and these term also contribute to the deformation. You can see also that even though the uh, material has been subjected to the shear uh, deformation uh, in the uh, diagonal terms, there is a representation or, pre or uh, there is uh, an existence of uh, gamma y x. So, due to the simple shear uh, being in imposed on the extensional element or the diagonal element, there is a presence. And so, it therefore, uh, uh, is uh, intuitive now that uh, whenever we have large deformations and non-linear response, uh, non-linear rheological response of materials, even though we are imposing only simple shear flow, the material uh, can respond and give us non, uh, 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 the normal stress differences. So, even though only shear stress is being imposed on the material, we also will have normal stresses generated in the material. And so, the uh, similar continuing on, uh, we have now the extensional flow, flow description, where we saw that uh, the overall velocity uh, is only in the z direction. So, this is like where we are pulling the material in the z direction and it contracts in x and y direction. And uh, we have uh, seen this uh, information earlier uh, in the course. And so, where we can define the uh, configuration at any time tau in terms of uh, the present configuration. And generally for these extensional flows, we define uh, the two ratios, ratios of these two configuration as lambdas, so called stretch ratios. So, therefore, in terms of stretch ratios, we can define the deformation gradients. Uh, 
and these deformation gradients can be used to calculate the strain tensors and uh, therefore, the strain tensors are uh, basically uh, incorporate uh, the stretch uh, ratio squared terms depending on which definition we use uh, we can uh, it will be 1 minus lambda x squared or 1 over lambda x squared minus 1. And the finger strain tensor of course, is only lambda x squared, lambda y squared and lambda z squared. And uh, so, uh, again we can uh, try to see whether these terms uh, 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 what happens to them when we have deformation very small. So, basically lambda x is uh, akin to defining. So, if we have uh, this is the original length. So, if we have the original length and uh, because if this material gets deformed and uh, the now length changes. So, strain of course, is defined in terms of the change in length versus the original length. So, strain is defined as delta L by L while stretch ratio on the other hand is defined as L plus delta L divided by L. So, whenever uh, deformation is uh, 0, so if there is no deformation then uh, delta L itself uh, goes to 0 and therefore, we have strain going to 0 and stretch ratio actually becomes 1. So, therefore, uh, stretch ratio is also useful in terms of uh, determining the overall uh, behavior of the material. So, based on uh, this simplification as to how strain and stretch ratio are related, uh, we can uh, define uh, it in terms of the strain which is epsilon and uh, these are exponential terms uh, and uh, if you work with the overall algebra, if epsilon is very small then e to the power minus epsilon can be simplified as 1 minus epsilon. So, given these simplifications we can show that the overall uh, the uh, strain tensors both uh, E tau and E will reduce to the strain tensor which we know as infinitesimal strain tensor. And again this is something which uh, we are familiar with the fact that uh, since in the z direction there is only strain epsilon and given that this is an incompressible material uh, with uh, Poisson's ratio being 0 0.5 what we have is in the other two direction x and y direction we have contraction and the contraction is minus half time epsilon. So, this is something which we again uh, learn in terms of the infinitesimal strain tensor for a uniaxial extension or tensile deformation. But for a overall uh, material deformation which is arbitrarily large uh, in terms of stretch ratios the strain tensor uh, E tau and E are given uh, by the following expressions. So, with this now we have uh, finished defining uh, the overall strains. Now, in the next segment of the lecture, uh, we will look at the convected rates and then look uh, finish up by looking at some nonlinear models which are very useful for describing the nonlinear response of materials.